Hello everybody, it's SOD Medhaven here today, and with me I've got Devstroke and Yang, but before that, you guys have a tank that you enjoy playing? Anything else? Me? Uh, as of recent, I've become a big fan of the, uh, the Jumbo 76. This thing is nothing but an absolute monstrosity, and I'm going to be honest, I'm super happy that I'm wrecking repping the uh, 80th anniversary of D-Day on this tank along with the emblem and, uh, you know, the pretty lady to distract all the little kids. That's always a blast. So with me, I was rocking with uh, Deathstroke and then Yang. We were kind of, uh, it was funny because we were talking about it the match prior, that seeing Mountain Pass, and we were talking about uh, this top section because we've, we've always talked about this top section this top section is ridiculously good and Deathstroke he's done this with me this area of the map is extremely simple from here all the way down if you are in this defensive location or you're right here you got a tank lined up there and then possibly you have a buddy let's say that is probably rocking about right there or maybe even a little bit further back it just depends on like what armor type you got this entire area is completely useless to ever try and engage inside of because you just let the enemies come around and then you get to farm them from up here the entire time so let's go ahead let's jump into the replay let it play out and then we'll see if my heart attack kind of settles down a little bit because that's all this was for me <laughs> oh my gosh so you guys just should we just let this run out normally and just go over the map and watch everything kind of happen as it goes. Because if we watch yeah. me for a second, we're not going to see me yeah. move for 40 seconds, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why I went left, just because you weren't moving. I just ended yeah. up doing my own thing. Um, so I got a real like the team was bad addiction. For a second. Yeah, but then everyone kind of went hard right. You know, like, you're you're even going right. Everything else is kind of splitting off a little bit. Off the yeah, back of the MX-1390. When I realized that there was too many heavies going right, so I decided to turn around. And that's when you came back. Yeah. The whole lineup of it was really nice, though. Thunderbolt, though. Like, in all honesty, this Thunderbolt, you, you that, he is throwing away hit points right there. Yeah, that was a, that was a waste. Am I moving yet? Oh, now I'm moving. I'm finally back. Yeah, and then I'm climbing the hill. So, one thing that I've always mentioned on this map is here. Coming up top... You know, I, I as soon as I got back, my first reaction was I opened up my map, I looked at it, and I was all like, okay, we got a problem right here. All of our heavy armor is on the right side, and this is kind of a useless path to take, because usually you only get a couple of guys that take this bottom path, and that's about it. Uh, primarily, the biggest engagement is always going to be happening within this general area. And usually the largest engagement is actually inside this back section. Normally it happens here. This map always tends to shuffle, but usually you get a really strong player base right here in the center. Sometimes you'll get two or three tanks that'll take bridge. And then the down low section, usually it's what, like four tanks on average? And like yeah. pretty much every single match, it's always like four tanks. Um, yeah, that or less. It's yeah, and then or none. <laughs> usually this engagement down here, this is the one that we'll see like some of the bigger impacts and then you get your snipers in the back there wait here to go in across or you have you guys that kind of clean up inside this area and usually they won't take this path they'll usually instead split off here and usually break underneath because they don't want to get sniped from up top if up top wins because if this top section wins these guys are in trouble right here these guys are always in trouble if this top section wins or if you're situated here like you get a tank lined up there you actually have no line of sight there like it takes a sniper up here to be able to shoot the guy here so that so primarily you got this giant rock formation so one guy can sit here and snipe down if he does it correctly but that's never really guaranteed all right let's go ahead and play now uh map design i will say this this side of the map is far superior for defense compared to anything else just because of the way that this hill is designed um, if you try defending on the other hill, it's way too uh, light and everything else. From the opposite side of the map, you can't really uh, defend too well from the top side of the hill unless you are situated to a point to where you have a tank right here. And that's pretty much about it. Um, this entire top section is really difficult because if you try to back up and come back, then you're exposed over this entire sniper ridgeline. 
that's real easy to take you down. I mean, sure, you can cover yourself from the bridge by simply hiding here, but for anyone that's coming up through the midsection, they're all going to get view if you're too far back up here. So the opposite side of the spawn is just far superior whenever it comes down to it. Yeah. Yeah, we're, so, so. yeah we're, we were about right here. So we're just going to go ahead and continue. Let things kind of play out. That uh, Thunderbolt went down. It's 13 to 14 right now. And the moment I said this, I was telling Deathstroke, hey, we, <laughs> you need to come back. <laughs> and he was like, he's already too far out. He's already caught out. There's no way. So I kind of went up in the top section to provide a little bit of uh, fire support. In all honesty, like if I just went over the replay of this match directly, it would have been super boring in the very beginning stages of it. Just because you're coming out to try and hold this. Deathstroke's all alone on this side of the map. The entire left side of the map is just falling apart. And usually the way it goes is once this side falls, this entire midsection falls apart. So actually, let's go ahead and pause real quick and then let's go over this real fast. If the left side falls and you are down to four tanks left on the field and two of them are inside this section here, for instance, we have is that a is that a champion? No, that's a, That's frostbite. a frostbite, dude. That is sick. <laughs> dude, you you I you haven't seen those things forever. That's actually really cool. I'm kind of jealous of that. Wow. Really? All right. That's really cool. Um, but if you end up in a scenario like this, uh, your your best bet is you got a lot of heavy tanks over here. Okay. Let these heavies guard the bridge. Abandon bridge entirely. This Oho, this OI, there's not really a whole much that he can do right now, but let's go over a scenario that, you know, you have enough people that are alive and everything else. So, starters, this rock is your best friend. This backside's your best friend. You get a guy posted up right here. He's capable of helping suppress this entire line here. This inside section, I always see people trying to work this inside the fire down. That is a complete waste. You are better off relocating behind this rock here or further back behind this rock if you are behind this rock you're capable of pulling ever so slightly now you got crossfire coming down plus the way that this rock is designed let's get a little bit closer to it you can kite off it from your frontal armor so you can come out like this pull out but you're aiming to the right and you could work off this rock to handle that then you have a guy that's situated here about, let's say, right here, he's going to be kiting off the front as well, coming out, being able to get his gun down range. And your main goal is to situate this entire section before anything else. Now, if enemies are pulling through this back area, the person that's right here, he's playing farther back now. So his goal is to be further back to get a better line of sight on this one and only entryway. Right there, you got three points covered. You've got this covered, and your guy back here is capable of covering out, which means that this person is now safe from anyone that is trying to attack him from the back section, and the guy in this corner is safe from anyone, period, from this back section. So the force is kind of um, deviated between that section, but, you know, like if you're three-man platooning, that is one of the best ways to handle the engagements on this part of the map. Here in mid, I mean, in all honesty, mid is played so much that you don't really need to go over it a whole lot. But let's give you a little bit of an idea on this safety net section. From right here, the only spot that can actually hit you is top of ridge. So from here, you're capable of, you know, aiming down to your right, playing peekaboo, and getting full control on the bottom section of the map here. Coming over. Once you push up, I actually see a lot of people make mistakes in this. Whenever you push up, you always want to stop. Never full send it to the corner. Situate here and here first. And if you have a third player inside your group, he might be here or instead, rather than there, he's going to be further back supporting inside the back line here. And then he's able to pull out into the road to get shots going down if needed. So other than that, we can go back to the replay now. But I just wanted to include that just because we're going over maps. <laughs> That's what we've been doing. And where do you have your, uh, say you're in a platoon, two heavy tanks or... If you're in a heavy medium, have those guys go up there, have whatever's lighter armor sit back. Up where? Bridge. Up here? On that bridge. No, on the oh, bridge. Oh, on the bridge. Like, uh, talking about. how would you yeah. want it what? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, say you're platoon with people, uh, who would you send up front there and who would you have stay back? Like, what? Oh, so you're talking about the, the armor layout. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, the way that I would do it is this. The heavy tank 
would not be there. Okay. Your heavy tank would actually be situated on the inside corner here. The reason why this is a stressful corner. It's a lot more relaxed inside this spot where your medium is capable of rushing to get into to force them to kind of back up a little bit more. And then once you're situated, that medium, if he keeps on trying to pull out, he's just going to get bled nonstop from this position. And, you know, he's going to be a little bit sad face. I tried to make a teardrop that didn't work out. But <laughs> right here, your heavy tank is going to push up because he can handle the stress of this position. While if you have another heavy tank, he's going to be hauled down here making sure these guys have problems getting shots out, allowing you to cross. So Perfect. that would be it. But like for starters, whenever you first approach this area, you know, this rock's real easy to use. Um, the back section where this uh, frostbite's located. Zero goldfish. Yeah. I think that, I don't know if that was the guy. This back section is super useful as long as you have like a low profile tank. If your tank's too tall, for instance, uh, back here, 705A, you can fit it back here without much of an issue. And you can kind of uh, hug this left side wall on the inside and then prop yourself up on, on, on this rock. You prop your right track on it. You're going to lose a little bit of gun depression, but whenever you back up, you're actually going to back up on this rock, which is then going to give you the depression you need to aim down. Yep. So I've been in that same exact situation. Yeah, like th oh, this enough. one is uh, kind of rough to play in the middle point. But middle is actually one of the funner points to play because once you get control of it and you push in, your 705A, if you have a 705A, specifically tier 10, your 705 actually goes right here. And the reason why? Perfect. It's really hard to get what you need on this side. Like, it just depends on what armor you have and how things are going to go. All right. Enough of that. We actually got to get this replay done. <laughs> <laughs> I put one shot into the 516 right here, so we're going to go ahead and lock on the me. Um, you know, the jumbo, one of the biggest reasons why I, I absolutely love the jumbo in so many ways is just this angled front armor, the way that this is designed. if the, You're going to see that I'm at a slight angle right here. Even if they pull out, it's just a turret, but even if they manage to be able to catch the hull from their point of view, that's about 180 millimeters of effective armor, maybe even like 230. And that's what's so nice about it. I think at this point, I was telling you already to situate in the bottom section here because we need yeah, that crossfire. Yeah, we need that crossfire down here because you have me up top. So let's go ahead and pause out. So the up top point, this is the 76 jumbo. And then you have your support down low. Um, defensive plays like this. I'm actually just going to go ahead and back up. Uh, we're going to do two sections. Usually, uh, I like to situate two guys up here. One guy watching the corner, but inside of scenarios like this, um, even though the right side of the map is actually, uh, they have a lot of support down here, it is 8 to 12 right now. So that's, you know, we're already kind of bleeding. And we're down to two tanks on the defense inside this area, and I have no idea how many ticks are coming up, but it's quite a bit. Um, so the way I would play this is here. I would take a decently hauled down tank, and I would situate it kind of in this back section right here. If we kind of go down, you're going to see how this kind of goes into a divot into the ground. You can kind of utilize this area for gun depression. Um, if that doesn't work out, another play is you can work inside back here. And what's nice about this spot is you have this rock. You have another rock. You have a tree that you can knock over this way that you can now play a little bit defensive here in these rocks. And if you have good enough concealment, the tanks that come up this ridge, you're always going to get first sight, and it, depending on what tank you're in, you will never be spotted. Um, I also usually like to prep by taking all these trees down and knocking them down in specific directions. So this tree would be knocked down to the right. This tree would be brought up ever so slightly, a little bit off, and then knocked down. That way, this tree is that way, this tree is that way, that way you have this kind of little wider area of camouflage. This final tree would actually be double stacked in the same direction, lining up with this tree. That way you are situated right here and you have this giant line of camouflage. Um, there's also two more trees, three more trees, and you would knock them down in separate directions as well. So as a demonstration here, we'll just do this real fast. Uh, this final tree, you'd actually knock it out slightly out. This one, the second, 
would come out ever so slightly in a different direction. And the final, you would actually do a full send outward. That way, if you need to... Oh, I'm dragging the arrows with me. That final tree actually provides a little bit of cover every once in a while. For instance, if this tree is further out and these enemies are pulling around and you have a guy situated here, your top section is spotting and the sniper can now fire through these trees and never get detected with the enemies on the right. But that's uh, for the low section setup. For top section, you know, you're situated on this corner. You're situated here. You got one guy kind of here that plays it out a little bit. And then your third sniper, your third sniper is always watching this section or he's helping assist down the main road. But Deathstroke died, so <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Fuel tank hit, and then the M4... Uh... Yeah, the M4A1 uh, FL10 is actually kind of nasty. Deathstroke, you were you were talking about it in the match. You were like, that is ridiculous. Yeah, that thing just clipped me so, out. So, real fast right here, I'm going to be honest, Yang, my first reaction to this was, I need to kill this guy. I need to kill him because in AMX on the yeah. side of an Oho, you cannot, you can physically not shoot him. So my first reaction to this was, I will full send it to kill this guy if I have to because I know you're not going to have sure a fun time. Backed into him. You did. Yeah. And I was putting a lot of pressure onto him, but they were super focused on you. And you set him yeah, on fire, so he was cooking. Yeah, as you can see, I was full sending it. I was all like, I am not putting up with you. Yeah, they attacked the wrong threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, clearly, by the end of the match, yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, We're right through the front. Yeah, a lot of the hit points were lost. All right, so real fast, one thing about this replay that's already kind of up in the air. It is two versus ten. I, I will be honest, I was a little bit excited and a little bit not excited at the same time. I was all like, oh, this is this is going to be horrid. One, two, three. Okay, YouTube, my heart still, I am shaking from this still. All right, this is the moment. Here we go. Everyone gets to enjoy this for themselves. That's going to be in the thumbnail. I am... M4A1FL10. I'm just going to full send it. There, there's, there's no point in even trying to stop that. Now, last man standing on this map. Let's go over this. A lot of people are going to look at this and they're going to think, all right, you know, one versus ten, this is going to suck. Uh, there's a lot of hit points all over the place. There's a decent amount of HP, a yeah, real decent amount of HP. Anyways, here we go. Top section of the map. You're defended against artillery from the side of the mountain here. Um, you have your kind of view position that can help you catch stuff out coming down to the downside. But the main defensive position on this map every single time is this general area all around here if you are situated here just right it's very hard to dig you out by the way the t terrain is designed as you can see this edge right here kind of flattens out you can prop yourself up ever so slightly to max out gun depression and just watch everything start to stack up oh also still wondering how the artillery knew i was taking a turn like that i drove I drove all the way out to here. I got unspotted right here, and I took an extreme hard left, and he hit me. So props to the artillery for doing that early catch out like that, because that uh, dropped me down to 397 hit points. All right, time to see my sheer panic. Oh, T67. I'm down to 277 hit points. One shell, 111. It's it's kind of funny because um, right before this match, we were talking about 
the 76 and the damage never feeling really threatening in any way. Boy, did that feel wrong. <laughs> hey, look, from the first person point of view, it's like I'm not running um, enhanced target info. Imagine trying to play without it like that. That'd be just ridiculous. All right. You know, at, at this point, let's go ahead, pause. Let's show how people how to kill this properly. Um, a lot of people are coming up the hill. You can see that there's a lot of people here right now. So if you have a tank that is legitimately camping out right here and you're having a lot of problems killing him, well, let's just say this. He's going to have a much harder problem if everyone decides to move as a group and coordinate by doing one simple task. You drive over here. And you aim up the hill. Let's get out of the way of all, all the corpses. You'll be able to see it a lot better from here. This entire section can shoot up here <laughs> without going against the gun depression that you have to try and muster to get him from. I'm just going to say that, but, you know, that's how it goes. M4A1 FL10 taken down, T67 pulling in. Uh, at this point in time, now that I'm rewatching, you know, like th this was extremely stressful. There's a Churchill down low, tier 5. Um, my thoughts on that Churchill were not very high. The VK that's really close, though, he is definitely an issue. Artillery splashing. Absolute chaos. A um, Churchill gun carriage pulling in. Now you can see I'm pulling further back where we're lining up inside the back section. And I'm switching my focus off of the VK to go after the Churchill putting my last shell into Churchill, and now we're focused on the, the uh, Churchill gun carriage. There we go. Is that a gun mantle shot? It looked like a gun mantle shot, but fortunately no pin. Churchill taken down. So far, six kills. And that Churchill one has 758 hit points, and I'm trying to find the gun depression right here, but I can't seem to find it, so I have to drive a little bit further out right. He's lobbing HE at you. Yeah, he is. He was just full sending it. Now, he's desperate. Extremely. One thing about the uh, Shermans that I really like, and I'm going to show this off. A lot of time, people like to drive straight on. But at this angle right here, the armor on this is probably equivalent to 170 millimeters at this point in time in this impact zone where they're firing. Uh, this inside zone, this is probably worth 160 to about 100 and uh, yeah about 160 to 170 and then further out in this area this is probably in the range of like 200 millimeters right now and the sides this is where you want to be aiming right now because i'm over exerting the front but i'm using the layout of the terrain to make it to where they can only see the front plate ever so slightly and my gun is having a problem catching out the target so if you come to me right now and we zoom in you're going to notice this line the gun's barely coming over the top of it, which means that they can only see my top plate whenever I pull it this time. That's something to keep in mind. Like, knowing your tank and knowing how your armor works is one of the biggest advantages that you can have inside the game. And that was going through my head inside this match. The um, A43 Black Prince. Okay, hold on. Eclipse, once upon a time, called this a Tier 6 Mouse. I don't disagree because it suffers from the tr same tracking damage shot. If I wasn't focused on tracks and I knew about that prior, um, he would have killed me a lot sooner rather than me being able to lock him down like I did. Churchill won. The final little bit. And as the Churchill started to get closer and closer, um, I started to get a little bit stressed out because, uh, you know, HE and then my little machine gun port that's a weak spot on the front of this. As he was doing this, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, going to back up, come right here. In advantage, shooting underneath the Black Prince. OK, 
Okay. That is some carnage coming up the hill. And at this point in the match, I am in full panic. So, usually at the end here, like we were we were discussing, like uh, there's a very high possibility that the artillery is just going to outright kill me, and just by really scout it. Yeah, by just splashing, spotting them out. I'm going to go ahead fast forward because this last little bit is a bit anti anticlimactic. Um, kind of just a game of cat and mouse for a split second, and I was all like, you know what? I'm going to pull in. I put a lot of premium shells out because, well, I'm going to throw a premium out. There's no denying that. Hugging the inside wall and spotting the M41, freaking out, putting in two shells. One, two. And now right here, I actually don't know if the artillery is loaded in five seconds or whatever it is, because before these artilleries got buff, I used to know the reload times of all the artilleries in the game whenever it came down the 1v1s. But at this moment, I'm backing off because I have no idea what's going on. And we're both spotted right now. Now we're both unspotted. So now it's anyone's game on what they're going to do. Me, I am just waiting patiently, pre-aimed for whenever he's going to come. I'm not going to push him at all. But for whatever reason, the artillery decides to say... I think I'm a bit done with this match and fires off around, letting me know that he is empty and taking him down. And then I proceeded to disappear for 30 minutes going outside because I was having a heart attack. However, this is a new um, kill record at tier six. It is not a new damage record at tier six for me, but this is the most kills I've ever done in the game, and I'm I'm actually kind of ecstatic to say that it's inside of the uh, the Jumbo 76 on a match like that. That was splendid to see. That was awesome. Here it is. This this yeah, is cool. ridiculous. I, I lost I week. lost forty eight thousand. <laughs> Uh, it's silver, but that's not that bad. <laughs> At least I had a premium I account. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> but 51 direct hits, 4,826 damage, 12 kills, and enough damage uh, ricocheted to kill me over twice. A mastery batch, Spartan, call it Bonoff's crucial contribution for destroying at least 12 enemy vehicles Pasucci's metal pools metal devastator top gun high caliber still wall sniper hand of god duelist and then a third page a ranger metal and ranger metals are pretty rare um rare for me because i don't play a whole lot of low tiers shell proof and bruiser anyways enemy team really really enjoyable match and like i I don't think any, anyone in the enemy team, you know, played it wrong because that's a that's a situation that you don't see a whole lot. But hopefully they learn a little bit from what I talked about. Anyways, you guys, thank you for jumping in. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. If you learned something new, let me know. If you're enjoying the style of content, let me know. It always helps. Anyways, Deathstroke Yang, jump, thanks for you know jumping in. Thanks for playing the night. That was a uh, quite the enjoyment. It was a pleasure, dude. That was ridiculous at that match. Yep. Like I am. I, I am still struggling to pick up my coke. I'm still shaking with it in my hand. <laughs> Anyways. What coke dust yet. Yeah. Well, then again, I mean, we're playing Americans, so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> World War II, we got to get the, the cokes and uh, maybe some of the chocolate. Anyways, until next time, you guys have a great time, afternoon, uh, night, whatever time you're catching this, and I'll see you in the next one.